Hello everyone, my name is Chris and welcome to the 5 minute review. Yeah, yeah, I know, this. the, the video is about 7 minutes long. Sorry, there's, there's a lot to talk about and I wanted to be thorough. But I'm still going to categorize it as a 5 minute review. Anyway, today's game is uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, and without further ado, let's get right into it. Ah, Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> oh boy, where do I begin? I guess I should start by saying that there are a few good things in here, and I admittedly had a bit of dumb fun playing it at first. However, all the good parts are just buried under an avalanche of tedious filler content, bad writing, and bland characters. Not to mention the insane amount of technical problems and lack of polish in almost every aspect. The game creates a vast and beautiful galaxy to explore, but it's filled with so many uninteresting things to do which results in just a bad game. <laughs> There are some highs, but a lot of lows, and the game as a whole just feels like a B-movie. There is some dumb fun to be had, but only once you set your expectations super low and accept the absurdity of it all. In Mass Effect Andromeda, you are a Pathfinder and are tasked with finding a new home for the hundreds of thousands of colonists in the Andromeda Galaxy. The premise is actually pretty interesting, and I thought the concept of having to start up a whole new civilization in a new part of the universe felt awesome. It was cool to find new settlement locations and see the viability of the planets grow over time. However, as interesting as the premise may be, the story as a whole is a bit uneven. The game starts out pretty rough, and the opening hour of the game can only be described as sloppy at best. Things just kind of happened on screen and it felt ridiculously unpolished. There were random frames of black screen in between cutscenes and instances where the game forced you into entirely unnecessary gameplay sections that could have been completely cut out from the game. There's, there's literally a 10 second gameplay section where all you do is look around before it brings you back into another cutscene. I'm not kidding. What's, the What's happening? It broke free. Just hang on. Engineering, report. The dialogue and the characters are also pretty uneven, and it makes it really hard to care about any of your actions in the game. Some characters are fairly interesting, but then so many others are the most boring, lifeless characters imaginable. And the writing is also, well, you guessed it, uneven. There are some times when it's solid, but then there are moments when the game hits you with something like this. <laughs> I think I really pissed that one off. Maybe because I shot him in the face. These occasional moments of absolutely cringeworthy dialogue make the whole thing feel worse because the horrible lines are the most memorable ones. And there really isn't anything to hold my interest. I mean, I stopped caring about the characters within the first couple hours, and the story felt pretty been there done that. Now, I would normally be okay with the story being a bit generic if the characters or dialogue were interesting, but sadly, they aren't. Now, let me start by saying that the combat is a bit basic, but pretty fun at first. The problem is that it doesn't evolve much. Sure, you get better weapons and some new abilities as you progress, but most of the enemy encounters are relatively the same. The game also gives you a whole list of different abilities you can have, but only lets you equip three, which is just kind of annoying and weird. Overall though, I thought the combat is pretty solid, but it does get boring after a while, especially when the missions you are doing are not that interesting in the first place. Speaking of missions, Mass Effect also boasts hundreds of different side missions to complete. Some of them are actually pretty fun, and I liked how there were different tasks and objectives that would really help improve life for all the colonists, such as setting up research labs, finding the cause of faulty wiring on the ship, and so on. These helped make the game feel connected, and it helped keep the immersion up. Unfortunately, not all side quests are created equal, and a lot of them became repetitive. Go to this one specific location and touch a button. Even some of the better ones still had very surface level interaction. And this isn't made any more fun when you have to go through the annoying menu system. Navigating the menus is an RPG of its own, and it's just so cluttered and unintuitive. Even once you figure out how it works, it's just so time consuming to do anything. The mission markers are also annoying as hell. There were many missions in the game that have multiple objectives to complete at once, but no matter how many of the objectives I completed, all the markers would stay on my screen for some unknown reason, resulting in a confusing mess because I had no idea where it wanted me to go. There are also a bunch of different bugs and glitches and a lot of unnecessarily long loading screens, which just gives the game a very rough feeling. And if I'm being honest, it feels a lot more like an indie game instead of a full-fledged AAA release. 
Now, the game itself actually looks gorgeous in the Frostbite engine, and the worlds are all beautiful and a real sight to behold at times. The new galaxy is pretty well realized, and it makes for a great backdrop for your adventure to take place. That being said, there are constant issues with texture pop-in and frame rate dips. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's certainly noticeable. The music is also pretty good, with some good ambient tracks to keep up the sci-fi atmosphere. There weren't any super memorable tracks here, but it gets the job done. And now, seeing as I have pretty much covered everything else, I think it's time for me to finally address the elephant in the room. The animations. And th th <laughs> they're awful. <laughs> they're, they're just plain awful, I'm sorry. They're, they're, they are as bad as people say. The faces look stiff and inhuman, the lip syncing is completely off, and the body animations during cutscenes are just clunky and <laughs> a bit spastic at times. And the biggest problem is that they are incredibly noticeable and distracting. I mean, right from the character creation menu, you can tell you're about to be in for a treat. 90% of the pre-made faces make you look like either an asshole or a complete dope. And I think I had almost as much fun making my character look as stupid as possible as I had actually playing the game. It just feels like a simulator for ugly faces. Now, look, I know the animations are not everything, and they certainly do not make or break a game. But the problem is, the rest of the game isn't up to par either. If you are a big sci-fi fan like myself, there may be a little dumb fun to be had with it, but make sure you go in with the lowest expectations possible. I cannot recommend picking up this game at anything more than 20 bucks. It ultimately ends up feeling like a very low-budget B-movie instead of the sci-fi epic that it should have been.